Hey guys and welcome to this video and today I thought I would show you guys our home network setup. So just a bit of a backstory, when we moved into this house we, we just loved it. We, we toured it and um, you know obviously we loved it because we moved in here but one of the cool things about this house is it has lots of closets like this one behind me here but we'll get there in just a second. And um, when I moved in, I said to the landlord, hey, does any of these closets in this house have power? Or any kind of power near them, or it would be easy to run an extension or anything. He goes, no, but I can drop a dedicated circuit in there for you. I'm like, sweet, okay, awesome, let's do it. So within a week of moving in here, he actually had his electrician come and drop a dedicated 20 amp circuit into the closet so we could run all our gear, which is incredible. So shout out to the landlord for that. No extra charge or anything. He just went ahead and did that. Um, and yeah, absolutely awesome. So without further ado, let's check out the closet. All right, so here we go and um, I'm going to show some close-up shots, um, but we're, we're going to just start from top to bottom. Um, so the first thing is actually outside of the closet, and it is right up here, just above my head, out of camera shot, but I'll show you. This is the Google Wi-Fi. Uh, it's the first generation version of the Google Wi-Fi, and the thing is incredible. We use it... Um, in a pack of three, I have one um, by our entertainment center uh, for the TV and Xbox and all that kind of stuff. And I have the other one in um, our uh, bedroom on our desk set up in there as well. Um, and the great thing about them is that it's mesh Wi-Fi, um, AC uh, Wi-Fi as well, uh, 1250, so it's nice and fast and it can handle a lot of devices connected, which is awesome. Whole home coverage, no drops anywhere, it is amazing. And they have two ethernet ports on the back, so it can actually plug a switch into them and hardwire devices. So I've got the Xbox, the Fire TV, all that um, stuff hardlined into the mesh, and it can use the, the backbone uh, network that it has uh, to uh, the backhaul to transfer the, the data across uh, without impacting the Wi-Fi. So it makes it super fast, super reliable, and um, just, you know, incredible for, for how we have this. So we have no wires, no Ethernet wires running around the house at all. Um, so yeah, that's what this is up here. This is the main one. This is plugged into the modem. Um, so let's go in the closet a little bit more here. And so just right up here, is a shelf full of um, just uh, drawers. So in these drawers are just spare cables and pieces and tools and tape and you know just anything that you would need to fix things or spare anything like that. Um, it's nothing exciting, honestly. So uh, yeah, don't don't get excited about that. It's just just spare stuff. But it's storage. It's a, it's amazing. So. Um, Next, uh, let's move down and we'll take a quick look at the actual rack that is in here. Um, if, you, if you can see that, I'll just step out of the frame. Uh, that, that is just an Amazon Basics um, shelf, a uh, five tier or four tier shelf or something. Um, and uh, yeah, it it's, uh, can hold uh, 300 pounds per shelf, which is stupid crazy because none of this stuff is that heavy. Um, but uh, it was really cheap and it just fits. If you can see that, it fits perfectly in the closet. Um, so uh, on, our, on the top shelf here, um, on, the, on this side, this is charging station land. So what we've got here is a power strip on the wall um, with various different chargers, uh, and that takes up one of our um, double plug sockets, which I'll get to in a second. Um, and um, we have uh, USB chargers and lightning chargers and anything that we would need to charge things. So that's charging land. Um, and next to that is a monitor right here, which is hooked up to um, two computers. It's actually hooked up to the Unraid server and also um, a little Windows 10 box here that I have borrowed from work, um, which uh, we use to just uh, jump into and check off network stuff. Uh, whenever we need to do some off-network stuff or I need to check on things outside of the work network or just a little computer to, 
to work off of. It's nothing crazy, just an I, a Zotac uh, i3 um, 6th gen with 8 gig RAM and a 2 terabyte um, mechanical storage, Windows 10 Pro. Uh, so um, very little apps running on it. It is just there for, you know, just something to use if we need to. Um, now up here, mounted underneath the shelf, uh, this is a switch box for the monitor, so I can go ahead and switch that and it will jump over to the Unraid server, uh, which is actually asleep right now, so it's not going to show anything on the on the screen. But yeah, that's a, uh, a, a, a KVM to jump over to the, uh, to the Unraid server, which um, is coming up very shortly. Um, so then we've got a keyboard here and uh, that's pretty much it for the, for the top shelf. These right here are our printers. Uh, we have a brother laser jet, just a monochrome laser jet, uh, which is connected into the network so we can print from anywhere. And we also have an Epson color printer, uh, which is also connected into the network um, and on the Wi Fi so that we can actually print from our phones um, as well if we want to in color. Um, we can also scan because these are all in one. Um, uh, printers and scanners as well so we can scan from either or of those from any of our machines or smart devices if we need to do that um, so that's really all that's on this shelf so then moving down this is where just uh, just right down here uh, this is where the magic happens actually for most of the things um, so I'm going to walk you through uh, what goes on down here so this little one right here on the top, this is the Zotac box I was telling you about. It kind of looks like an Intel Nook. Um, that's the one that so you can see the Windows 10 screen behind me here on. Um, now the big case underneath right here, that is the Unraid server. And that's what we use for everything. It runs our shared drive. We put all our homeschool stuff on there. It's our Plex server. Um, it's just our uh, central storage for everything that we can access from around the house on all our different devices anywhere. Um, and yet, yeah, as I said, it's our Plex server too, so it has all our movies and stuff on it. It's nothing special, honestly. Like, it's not a beefy server at all. It's an old desktop, dual-core AMD A6. That's all it is, nothing crazy. It's got 16 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory, um, and it is running... A bunch of different size hard drives because um, Unraid lets you run them all at different sizes, capacities, types, and everything. But they're all 7200 RPM, um, and uh, uh, most of them are three terabyte. Um, but we've got a couple of parity drives in there, and also uh, storage. So it works out to be 10 terabytes of usable storage. In terms of today, that's not a lot, but it's more than enough because we're only using about three and a half terabytes right now. Um, so as we, as we um, you know, move on and collect data and, and all that kind of stuff, we can always upgrade. And Unraid makes it super stupid easy to upgrade. You literally take out a drive and replace it. The only thing what you have to make sure of is that your parity drive is as big as your largest drive in there. Um, so right now my parity drives are three terabytes each, which means I can only put um, three terabyte drives in there. I would have to upgrade the parities to... Uh, eight terabytes or you know six or whatever to, to have larger drives in there but again it's easy you just take it out put a new one in data rebuild begins boom done it's like stupid simple uh, it also has an ssd cache drive in there just for uh, speed for accessing common files and also running um, the docker containers that run on there and some vms now if you want a more detailed overview on what docker containers and vms we run on unraid then uh, let us know, drop a comment below, and uh, I can go over everything and let you know what we have on there and how we utilize it. So that's pretty much it for the Unraid. Nothing special, it's just connected by gigabit LAN into our switch, um, which actually sits right next to it. Right here you can see, and then also in front here you can see our modem. We connect up to um, the uh, internet using uh, local uh, Southern Link. It is just standard cable copper internet. We get 400 megabits uh, down and 40 meg up. It's reliable, it's solid, and uh, it's cheap, so we're happy with that. 
Um, so that then connects into our switch as well, which then routes out into our Google Wi-Fi, which I was telling you about earlier, where we can do all our stuff, parental controls, guest networks, um, and everything. If you want a detailed overview of Google Wi-Fi as well, let us know. We can do that too, and how we use it, because we use it a lot for lots of different things, including blocking devices when uh, the kids don't need to be on them. You know what I mean? It's school time and they don't need to be messaging their friends. That's what we can do. So moving across, we have a CyberPower UPS. This thing's crazy. It's actually like eight years old, nine years old. I've replaced the batteries in it um, recently. So um, it, it told me that they died. And so uh, yeah, we just replaced the batteries. It costs 30 bucks to replace a battery in it and it will give around about an hour of power. An hour of power, how cool is that, all right? So we got about an hour of power in this whole closet. By the way, guys, don't plug printers into the UPS, into the battery side, okay? Don't do it because they draw too much power and you'll kill your batteries, okay? You, you don't, I don't care how important you think you are, you don't need to be printing when there's a power outage, okay? You just don't, go do something else, okay? So don't do it because you'll break it. Anyway, and you'd be surprised how often I see that at work. Honestly, it's like, my UPS is broken. It's beeping really loud. Well, is your printer plugged into the battery side? Uh, yeah. Okay, take it out and you'll be fine. Boom, works every time. Okay, anyway, enough about that. Um, let's move on. The, the next shelf down, it's paper. That's all it is. That's the bottom shelf and it's all paper. So we collected a bunch over the years whenever there have been sales on Amazon and we, we print a lot we homeschool so we print a lot of material so it's like we don't want to run out of paper so uh, yeah we have like a shelf full of different um, types of paper um, and then as you can see on the floor here it's a little messy um, but we have like a roll of art paper down there our ink and printer supplies um, and then a, a box down there of different uh, um, supplies as well. Um, but really, that's actually about it for the closet. Uh, nothing, nothing special going on here. Um, really, it's uh, it's just tucked in, uh, you know, in in this out of the way, and um, it's great because you know once you go ahead and you close this door up, out of sight, out of mind, and you know it's nothing for anybody to be messing with. It just sits in here. And now uh, we can get on and do what we need to do. And it's not taking up room in any other room. So yeah, excellent. If you saw anything in this video that you really liked and you wanted uh, a more detailed video on it, let us know. We would love to do it. We are looking for more content ideas to put out there. And um, yeah, we, we do um, what we can to entertain. So I hope you like this video. Uh, give it a big thumbs up and uh, like and comment and subscribe. Check out all our other videos as well. We've got lots of different videos. Um, we aim to please. So yeah, if uh, you have any questions, let us know. And until then, we will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.